Okay, in this lecture we are going to discuss um, a little bit about the physiology of the appendix. Now bear in mind that the appendix has been ignored by medical sciences for a very long time. Um, it's, supp it's supposedly a useless organ without any function. And a lot of the research that was done in the appendix over the last sort of hundred years or so was ignored because this was mainstream thought in medicine is that it has no uh, function whatsoever. So a lot of this uh, lecture is going to be more uh, on theoretical aspects um, and what we think the appendix might do. Um, but this is a, there's a lot of new research going on into the appendix and a lot of this stuff is going to have to be validated in the years to come. But for what it's worth, let's give a brief overview of what we suspect the appendix is up to in the human body. Alright, so the appendix, uh, within the appendix there are always, almost always biofilms. What is a biofilm? It's just basically a um, um, bacterial rich secretion. And this biofilm is always full of uh, the usual commensal bacteria that colonize our colon. Now, um, the appendix appears to constantly shed this biofilm into the colon. And we therefore suspect that perhaps it plays a role in maintaining normal bacterial colonization of the colon. Especially if there's something that washes away the normal bacteria, like for example, watery diarrhea. After a bout of watery diarrhea, most of our normal bacteria flora have been washed away. Um, but uh, we suspect that the biofilm in the appendix uh, is not as affected. And so colonization of the colon uh, begins again uh, from the appendix. And the supporting evidence for that, um, first of all, in front of, before the appendix, in other words, in the small intestine, proximally uh, and further on, there's not much in the way of biofilms. There are lots of secretions, but they're not bacterial rich secretions. And then just after the appendix, suddenly there's a lot of biofilm. There's an abundance of biofilm. But this biofilm uh, thins out further and further uh, on as you get uh, closer towards the anus. So that suggests that's the appendix generating this biofilm um, that's colonizing the colon. Furthermore, the appendix has very high levels of gut-associated lymphoid tissue, and was known as GALT, um, and there's a large concentration in the appendix, and that suggests that the appendix has some sort of immune function, and it can very well late, uh, one day be classified as an organ of the immune system. Okay, so let's talk about appendicitis. I'm not going to go s into the sort of pathophysiology of uh, appendicitis that the surgeons, I'm sure, are going to briefly touch on for you. Um, but let's talk about the relationship between appendicitis and the appendix's normal physiology. We suspect that the appendix is a biofilm generator and also an immune uh, organ. And um, obviously, if you think about rural communities and how human beings have had to live for most of their lives, they usually had. Um, uh, poor quality drinking water and high incidences, incidences of diarrhea. In rural Africa, diarrhea remains a killer and kills uh, many um, newborn babies. And for some reason, as people moved out of rural communities into city cities, we started developing a condition called appendicitis. Um, so appendicitis is a disease of cities and industrialized societies. Uh, if you're an American living in a city, you have a 35 times greater risk of developing appendicitis compared to someone who has diarrhea in rural Africa. And possibly this is due to excessive um, hygiene. Uh, in other words, we wash our food too much, we clean our food too much, we're not exposing ourselves enough to pathogens and bacteria. And the appendix, uh, as an immune organ, without that stimulation, um, starts uh, becoming overactive. Um, basically, it's, it's the same theory as the hygiene hypothesis for allergies. Um, if you raise a child and you only give it uh, formula milk and you keep the child excessively clean, that child has an ex uh, a much higher chance of developing an allergic uh, condition because the immune system doesn't have any stimulation, so it starts just... Um, becoming hyperactive in the absence of anything better to do, uh, so to speak. Um, whereas children are always playing in the dirt um, and are breastfed with relatively dirtier breast milk 
um, into the lower incidence of our allergies, and we suspect because the uh, uh, immune system is stimulated um, by the constant exposure to pathogens, so it doesn't develop the hyperactivity um, um, uh, as a reaction to lack of stimulation. And possibly appendicitis is the same thing. Possibly appendicitis is a hyperactive appendix um, inflaming itself due to having nothing better to do, due to having um, no stimulation from pathogens. And uh, one article I read even suggested that you know it seems that people with intestinal worms never develop appendicitis. Um, and we know intestinal worms secrete a lot of chemicals to try and survive in the colon. One of the chemicals that they secrete is a chemical, a cytokine, that reduces um, inflammation in the colon. And it might be through over the course of human evolution, because most human beings were colonized with some intestinal worm or other, that we have, ev uh, through evolution, developed a relatively um, overactive appendix. And because we are no longer in a situation where most of us are colonized by worms, um, without that balancing effect of the parasitical uh, cytokines, we are now more prone to developing an overactive appendix. And uh, appendicitis is much more fatal um, than the 18, early 1800s as the disease was uh, developing. Um, the, cure, the treatment of appendicitis was still debated. And a lot of surgeons are saying you can't take out the appendix because uh, we don't know if it's possible to live without an appendix, for example. Uh, so they tried various operations to try and suture the appendix and close the perforation, that sort of thing. Um, and before they could do that, um, furthermore, in the early 1800s, uh, hundreds, um, before it occurred to them they must take out the appendix, all they did was an uh, incision and drainage uh, through the abdominal wall. And bear in mind that this is uh, before... Um, uh, anesthesia. But a lot of people died of appendicitis in the 1800s and uh, the autopsies at that time um, made the, the medical guys at, of that time think that it was usually due to obstruction uh, due to food um, or feces. And to this day um, s um, obstruction is thought to play a role in some cases of appendicitis. Uh, for example, colon cancer can block off the appendix, causing it to inflame, or certain food uh, um, boluses can impact at the appendix. Uh, so that's still an accepted cause uh, of appendicitis. So that's just some things to think about. Remember, um, a lot of this is um, speculation at this point. Um, the research in appendis, appendis, uh, appendix physiology um, um, research pretty much stopped in the 1920s and only recently uh, started up again uh, being pushed forward by the Japanese for some reason. Um, and you, if you want to look at the articles for uh, the Physiology Appendix, you see a lot of them are very recent, 2012, even 2013, um, are, the um, uh, are the biggest sort of articles that's been published. Okay, so we suspect that the appendix is an immunological organ and as such it probably um, sensitizes itself to pathogens entering the colon. We also suspect it's a biofilm colonizer of the colon. But um, allegedly, if you take out an appendix, nothing happens to the patient. So that's why people have been saying, no, it's a useless organ. But actually things do happen to some patients when you take out the appendix. First of all, patients have had an appendix uh, removal tend not to develop um, ulcerative colitis. So uh, you're more likely to develop ulcerative colitis if you have the appendix in. Not only that, but ulcerative colitis patients, um, or specifically the subtype ulcerative proctitis patients, um, if for whatever reason uh, they develop appendicitis and they have the appendix removed, they often report great improvement in their symptoms. Um, the one study uh, um, I was browsing through said that 90% of the patients reported improvement in symptoms and 40% of the patients were cured of their ulcerative proctitis, which, uh, which is leading researchers to question uh, whether the appendix is actually the cause of ulcerative colitis. Um, perhaps ulcerative colitis is a disease of hyper-responsiveness to normal bacteria and the appendix is just constantly throwing um, these um, bacteria into the colon, um, or the appendix um, has an immune response, which is abnormal, it's a hyperimmune response, and then it spreads through the rest of the lymphoid tissue or gut that's spread throughout the gut.
Um, those are two possible explanations why patients with ulcerative colitis have relief when you take out the appendix. Um, this is, of course, um, still very early research. Um, in 2013 and 2012, um, observational studies were published with these results. So the next step is for some brave surgeons to do um, experimental studies where they actually take patients with ulcerative colitis, randomize them to appendix, uh, having an appendix removal and not having an appendix removal and comparing the two. And only when we do those experimental treatments uh, trials are we really going to um, be able to s confirm whether the appendix um, is a cause of ulcerative colitis. Okay, so we're not clear exactly what the appendix does, but we have some ideas, uh, some hypotheses, and I'm just going to give you a quick rundown to summarize what I said in the previous slides. Uh, the appendix appears to be an immunological organ, organ. it's part of the immune system, um, uh, like the spleen and the bone marrow, it might one day be classified along with uh, those organs. And in the absence of adequate stimulation uh, due to excessive hygiene, it appears, and in the absence of down-regulating cytokines from colonizing parasites, it then becomes overactive, and that overactivity can either cause appendicitis or inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's disease or um, ulcerative colitis. Um, furthermore, it appears that the appendix plays a role um, in the recovery of the gut after diarrhea. And in communities of a high incidence of diarrhea, this is an important uh, role that the appendix plays. And uh, in communities with a high incidence of diarrhea are the same communities with low incidence of appendicitis. Um, so when the appendix is able to play its role, it doesn't develop an, um, uh, hyperinflammation that leads to appendicitis and inflammatory bowel disease. Um, and Hypothetically, if you go into rural Africa and start removing people's appendixes, you're going to make their uh, ability to recover from diarrhea much worse and potentially increase the mortality rate uh, due to the diarrhea. I mean, that's just speculation, and, uh, uh, but hopefully someone is going to look into that um, for trial or some observational studies. So as I said, the appendix appears to be a biofilm generator, especially for the proximal large intestine. Uh, as we move further along the intestine, uh, you're going to have less and less biofilm being seeded, and before the large intestine, um, the proximal large intestine, is hardly any biofilm at all. And these are my references, and you can see um, I've got some quite recent references. So this is quite new information. I wouldn't be surprised if your surgery registrars um, um, have no idea um, about it at all. Um, and they might be surprised uh, if you mention it. So um, do keep in mind that some of your profs and registrars might not actually be aware of this uh, cool new research. And uh, I looked into some historical articles um, in the history of appendicitis. Um, uh, just because an article is old doesn't mean it's not worthwhile reading. Um, it's actually quite refreshing to read some of these old articles from the 1800s. They're refreshingly free from jargon. Um, and it's amazing how appendicitis has not changed at all since the, since the year 1837. The symptoms are exactly the same. Um, presentations are often exactly the same. Uh, I mean, the treatment has evolved uh, with time.